the declaration of a disaster area in Jamaica is as a result of the same trigger outbreak of disease as is provided for under section 20 of the Constitution. There are two routes and two avenues to the same. Even when you go under the Constitution, Mr. Speaker, rights are curtailed because of what you're dealing with. So to give the impression that rights are only curtailed under the current procedure used by the Prime Minister and that it doesn't happen is wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. That, that is what I heard said. That is what I heard said. Mr. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, it is all right for the opposition to believe that there is another way to do it. It doesn't mean that the way it has been done is wrong. It's just different. And I know from what I have heard that there is a feeling and thinking in the quarters over there that government is only competent when they form government and nobody else has sense. That is the bone of contention here. And that is the contempt that they hold, that only they should be in the seat of government to make decisions. But understand this. This is a democratically elected government. And I don't subscribe to all of this talk of watering down executive power simply because you're not in the reign of it. And the people of Jamaica need to know that even if the opposition would have taken only in a different form, and it is a form that it is that is being amended. So all of this hypocrisy and all of this tracing off about the form, about the form. Very strong words were used, Mr. Speaker. Very strong words. Very strong words. And at the end of the day, Mr. Speaker, I want the people of Jamaica to know that what is happening by way of this amendment has been contemplated in principle and policy when that side formed government. And it is disingenuous to give the impression that because this side in government has chosen to achieve the objective via a different route, that something is wrong with it. It is unfortunate. It is most unfortunate. It is unfortunate. Mr. Speaker, action under the disaster risk management involves advice by the ODPEN, not a political office, not a political office, to the Minister of Local Government. And having gotten a report about the existence of a local condition in any part of Jamaica, the Minister is obliged in law to write, give written notice to the Prime Minister. So giving the impression that the Prime Minister just gets up and declare a disaster area in Jamaica on his own is wrong and disingenuous. There is a process that is set out in law under the Disaster Risk Management Act. A report by the ODPEM to the Minister of Local Government and notice in writing from the Minister of Local Government to the Prime Minister. Thereafter, deliberations take place in Cabinet. And the Prime Minister acts in accordance with the deliberations and advice of Cabinet. By the way, the same deliberation and advice that would have been given to the Governor General in respect of a declaration of a sta state of public disaster and the Governor General constitutionally would have been obliged to act in accordance with the advice given. So I know some of them think that they are the only one with sense and none of us over here have any sense and cranial capacity to either advise or make decisions but we did go to school too and the contempt is essentially about that 
they resent that this side have, is in power making the decision. And don't give the people the impression that we don't know what we are doing. And that is where I take offence with some of what has been said. Not about there being differences in views, because that is part of the practice of law and the giving of advice. So, so Mr. Speaker, if then, if then, <laughs> so, so Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, if then, the only issue is that the opposition felt slighted that it didn't get more time to be, be, um, I'm, I'm trying to find the right word. It would not have made a difference. It would not have made a difference. Would not have made a difference. So, Mr. Speaker, here is my final thought. Having come into the Office of Attorney General, I have the opportunity to look at government action. And we have too many examples of government acting outside of the law. Same law passed, and in particular the Ministry of Finance. Long list. And we see the bills that come here periodically. So today, what the Minister of Finance is doing is proper. Is proper. This is not about tinkering with the fiscal rules. As a matter of fact, Mr. Speaker, it is paying due respect to those rules and the framework that has been put in place. The principle is the same. A disaster, because nobody is disputing that the disaster in this case is a proper disaster. But they are disputing how the government has handled it, because the GG has not proclaimed a period of public disaster, as opposed to a state of disaster by the government, when it is the same thing in law that has triggered it. So, Mr. Speaker, it's important that the people are not fooled, you know. People are not fooled. It is important that the people are not fooled. I'm not going to be rushed, you know, Mr. Speaker, unless you make a ruling. I am not going to be rushed. So, Mr. Speaker, let the people of Jamaica know that this bill is enabling the Minister of Finance to lawfully make the kind of adjustments forced upon us as a nation in these times of disaster. And the Minister of Finance is endeavoring to obey and honor the fiscal responsibility framework. Not tinker with it, not throw it away, not disregard it, so Jamaica is put at any brink of crisis again. And until such time, this is the side that is